Will you not say jacket off, on? It's up to you. Uh, well, however you're comfortable. Obviously, I need to... Let me... Yeah, get comfortable. <laughs> no, I've got to... Do you know what I'm saying? Obviously, you see when it comes to shirts, you've got to rock the shmedium to make it look like you've actually been working out. When I mean, really and truly, you haven't been working out. But if you bear with me two seconds, let me just... Just bust two push-ups. Just bust. Give me a quick ten. Give me one, two, ten. That's nice. All right, cool. We're ready, man. Let's go. We're ready, man. We're ready, man. We're ready. <laughs> we're ready, we're ready, we're ready. What's good? What's good? What's good? How you, how you feeling? <sighs> feeling good, man. Yeah? Had a good day? Yeah, I have. Not going to lie, man. I woke up? up this morning, so I'm happy, man. So I can be, uh, all I can be happy about. Okay, okay. That's good. What's your... What do you go by? What's your name? AJ's reactions. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is that across all platforms? Everything. Everything. Okay, okay let's, let's go straight into that then, because I've seen your page. Mm -hmm. um, how many followers do you have? What's oh. your biggest platform? Oh, TikTok. Yeah? 1.2 mil. Um, Instagram, I think it's like what? 100, maybe 45,000. Okay. Um, Facebook, I'm just building up now, but that's maybe like, what, 10K or something. YouTube, uh, maybe 7.5. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm, build, I'm building everything now. Okay. So, and how long have you been doing that? So in general, in terms of content creation, I think I've been doing it since 20... I'd say maybe 2015, 2014, 2015, something like that. Okay, right. It's been so a long that, time. Yeah, yeah. It's been a long time. Well, about eight, nine years. Roughly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Okay. Um, so what would you say you are? A content creator? Um, yeah. I'm an entertainer. Yeah. I like um, entertaining people and just being the life. I think that's very important. Yeah. And how did you get into that? Um, so... I've always been very, how can I say, sporadic with my behavior. In prom, in like, what, 20, 2009, I won class clown. <laughs> that says it all. You see what I'm saying? My teachers was like, you need to know X, Y, and Z. And from day dot, I've always screamed, bro, I understand that, but I don't think I'm ever gonna need trigonometry. I'm just trying to make jokes. <laughs> I'm not trying to, do you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to entertain. I'm trying to build, create. I'm trying to make people see, you know, different things as funny. You know what I'm saying? So you felt like that back then in school? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Did you feel like there was somewhere, an outlet? Like, you know, you have social media now. Did you have anything to kind of put that creativity into use at that time? So I used to be a dancer. Yeah. Um, I was dancing for a very long time. Um, and... Do you know what it was? You see with the dancing thing, um, how can I say? It was just a way for me to express that I want to create things, whether it be through movement or something else I wanted to create. Even before I was a dancer, I used to do art. Like from when I was like seven years old, I wanted to be an architect. Up to this day, I'm like 30 years old. Mum's still telling me, when you build me my house. What? I'm just like, mum, look, just, do yeah, you get what I'm saying? I don't want to be an architect anymore. Um, I want to be able to build you that house in another way. And one day I'm going to be able to do that. Um, and I hope to fulfil that promise. You know what I'm no, that's good. That's good. Um, dancing, what have you kind of danced in? Anything that we might have seen? Uh, so a lot of things in general. So I was in Michael Dapper's Man Don't Dance. I was in Tory Lane's and Nave Small's video. I was in um, Vossi Bop by Stormzy. I was in um, a, a few Mr. Easy music videos, Shata Wale, um, quite, quite a few people in general. Um, and do you know what the funny thing about that is? The main way that I was even getting on these music videos, it's just be, it was just being a vibe, it was just being a character. People were just like, we want people for this video you don't need to be the greatest dancer in the world, but can you bring AJ? Okay. 
And it was, it was literally just because I was just a very charismatic character. And I'll, I'll be very honest, I think in terms of almost all the music videos that I've done, I've probably gotten like a, a main feature where you see my face and it's me doing some type of movement, every single one of them. And again, it's because of my energy, because I'm a character. You see anything crazy behind the scenes or as a dancer working on set? Um, I see a lot of cattiness. Um, what do you mean? So, obviously in the dancer's world, the way it kind of works, it depends on what side you're actually on. So for example, um, a lot of dancers, as far as I understand, in the main dancing world where they actually dance and all that kind of stuff, would look at people that do TikTok dances and think that's not dancing. Do you see what I'm saying? So it's like that type of catty stuff that's in there and some people are upset that this is in the dance and some people are upset that that's in the dance and this is saturated by this and this and it just causes a bunch of friction. And then obviously you've got, you've got some really, really good dancers which have gotten to some amazing levels. And it's not that they necessarily make shit on people, it's just they, there's a bit of a, a hierarchy that is made known. You see what I'm saying? So it's not, um, it's not the best thing in the world, but through, through being in that dance world, there's a lot of amazing people. There's a lot of beautiful people. It's just the small people that jump in there and kind of ruin it for everyone else. Yeah, yeah. Is it, is it just kind of like a clash? Did they get into fights or anything like that? Or? I personally haven't seen any fights. I've heard about some fights. I personally right. haven't seen any fights though. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, as I said, it's one of those, it's one of those really catty, catty kind of things. Um, that just, and, and again, it's a, small, it's a small number of people that are ruining it for everyone else. Exactly. You still dancing now? Yes, in a party. Okay, so just you know for saying? that personal yeah, enjoyment. A, a, a festival, a party, you might get the one, two step. That's about it. I'm not body popping no more, man. I ain't doing the. So I say, I ain't, I ain't breaking my. I ain't, do, I ain't doing none of that no more. You might see me do a little one, two step or something like that. Um, but yeah, I would love to get back into it. Okay. But. Um, Busy, man. So do you do like the social media dances? Because there's a lot of TikTok dancers that go around and get viral. Do you never. You don't indulge there, in there it? is a fly that is trying to attack, man. No, I never still. I don't think I've I don't think I've I think maybe I think I maybe done one video where I attempted to join some kind of dance and it didn't go anywhere. So I just like, actually you know what, let me not let me just just scoop that on. You know when you know when you get to a certain point in life and you just know that certain things just need to be left in the past and you just move, need to move to something else? That was one of those things. I just need to kind of move it away and focus on something that, um, that is a lot bigger. Okay. So your content, what's, what's your content about really? Because it's AJ Reactions, isn't it? Yeah, so it's kind, of, it's, kind of, it's kind of broad because I've done comedy skits. I've done reaction videos. Um, just a number of different things in general. Like I've been all over the place. Like a lot of people don't know about like the Allen series or like the Trevor series where like Alan is like the typical UK dude and Trevor is the Jamaican and Alan would run to Trevor to be like, hey yo, Trevor, teach me how to speak some kind of pato to my Jamaican girlfriend or teach me how to season some kind of jerk chicken or something like that, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, it, 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 used, it used to be that type of stuff, but nowadays it's more food. I feel like I'm going to, I am going to attack the food market. Okay, right. And when I say attack it, I mean, I'm, I want to try everything, you see what I'm saying? And I want to be brutally honest about everything. And I want to experience that with people that have the same values as me. So when I, we do obviously start doing these videos and stuff like that, I'm having good conversations with people that are, you know, in my vicinity that have the same values as me, but we're also enjoying some food and reviewing it. Um, and potentially just inspiring people to try different things. Um, I'm a very big proponent of um, every culture has something that's, that you're gonna like. Um, and I feel like everyone should just broaden their horizons and at least let's just, let's just go try some stuff. Do you see what I'm saying? You never know. If you don't like it, you don't like it. Be respectful. If you do like it, you do like it. And now all of a sudden you've got a new favorite thing. You see what I'm saying? Okay, so would you try adventurous foods? Like would you try like crocodile or shark or? I, I tried crocodile already. What do you think? Uh, it's a bit chewy. That's what I heard, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so like, um, like I, I, I'll be adventurous to a certain point, um, as long as I don't disrespect anyone. Yeah. Um, I'll be adventurous to a certain point. Like I don't want to eat frogs. Um, I don't want to eat 
crickets. I don't want to eat bugs and stuff like that. Although I do know that obviously that's sprinkled into a vast majority of foods and seasonings and stuff. It's not something that I want to, do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I mean? So. so is your content majority food as well? You have quite a lot of food reactions, don't you? Yeah, so it, it's, it's, it's just, it's reactions in general. So food is, is, is what I went viral for. Okay. Literally, for some reason, and I don't understand, people like seeing my face next to food chewing and it's, it's never made any sense to me but i just get it it's, people like it i feel like it's one of those things where when you're watching it you're like oh shit this is what i'm doing chilling here with some maybe some what's it's on my chest <laughs> eating some food looking at food videos i'm never gonna make and now all of a sudden i'm hungry and it's 3 a.m and uh, i'm gonna have to make a spaghetti bolognese or something like that you know yeah. <laughs> Mm. How do you get all those followers? 1.2 million? Um, so I've always had a very guns blazing mentality in regards to social media. Mm -hmm. So, and I've actually, we, we, we've actually had a conversation about this before. I think when I first started TikTok, in my like first, I think it was maybe month or two, I hit maybe like 250,000 followers. In the first month? In the first month. Okay. My first, one of my first viral videos on TikTok was with my son. And it was literally like some potato thing. And like, so there was some cheese sprinkled on it. And he had no gums, yeah? So like I was eating my food and trying to kind of offer him some, but obviously he can't eat, you know what I'm saying? Blah, blah, blah. Um, and I went viral. Um, and then what I started to do is because I had content from other social media websites, I just literally said, Rah, this is a new social media. Let me just take all the content from these other places and just transfer it over. And I clocked that not only were things being artificially pushed, but the content that I'd done on other social media was blowing up. So for example, there's a fly that keeps attacking me. I'm sure I'm, sure I'm not the only person that's in here that, that keeps being attacked by this fly. This is crazy. Anyway, <laughs> um, on um, fly made me lose my train of thought. It, in, terms of the, 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 in terms of the first months or whatever, um, I realised that social media, the, the TikTok itself was just pushing people. So all I did was I was like, all right, cool. My social media stuff is over here from whatever content. I'm just going to repurpose it, put it over to here and just see what happens. And there were certain videos that just kept going viral. So I posted a certain video like eight times and it just went viral every single time. So I was like, rah, this is crazy. Let me just game the algorithm. So there were certain videos that I had that continuously went viral. So I just reposted them. If you go all the way back to where the start on my TikTok is, you'll see that it's just a bunch of videos that are pretty much reposted, but they're all reaction videos of food. Um, that went viral, and then I just kept growing from there. Okay, right, so you kind of clocked the algorithm, and then you just worked on it. Yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot to learn um, from just paying attention in general, and I feel like a lot of so social media content creators don't actually pay too much attention, and they worry too much about things that they're not really supposed to be worrying about. So I'll give you a prime example. A lot of people will be like, okay, I've posted a viral video and the video is going viral. Let me not post anymore. I always say the opposite. If a video is going viral, it means there's a lot of traction going to your profile. If there's a lot of traction going to your profile, it means people are going to see your other videos, which means that your social virality moment is going to spread out to the other videos that you're posting. Because again, once you've posted something that's gone viral and people have interacted with you, they're more likely to see another video from you. If they don't interact with you in that video, then you scoot out the algorithm. But if you do, because you're obviously up against more people than usual, it's more likely that you can get in front of more eyes, which means your other videos are going to transfer over to better performing videos. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's why I'm saying in certain situations when people are using social media, they need to um, just learn how to use it. Okay, okay, so, I see. Yeah. And um, is it all love on social media or do you get bad comments sometimes? Uh, yeah, I, oh, I get bad comments all the time. Yeah? I'm what kind bad. of comments? So for example, there's a, I can't remember the footballer's name, oh. but I have a specific video on TikTok where it has a stupid amount of comments and almost every single person, it's Rudinger, I think his name's Rudinger. Okay. Like I'd say 57 to 58% of the comments are literally calling me this footballer. And I'm like, I googled him, yeah. nothing alike. 
absolutely nothing alike. So I was just like, okay, it is what it is. Sometimes you'll receive your odd racist comment. Sometimes you'll receive people, receive, sorry, people that are um, not happy about your content. But the vast majority of the times, um, I, don't, I don't really pay attention to it. I will clap back though. If I do see it. Would you? I do clap back. Well, you actually write back on there and just cuss them up. <laughs> do you know what it is? I'm very petty. Yeah. So even though I get so many different comments, every now and again, I've got the time. If I see the comment, I'm going to clap back. If your hairline is receding, I will... Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I've seen a couple of bad ones on Twitter, Twitter wars and stuff like that. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, do you know what it is? I feel like some people think that because you do content creation and social media and stuff like that, that you're, how can I say, immune yeah. to everything. Yeah. Um, and that you should always take the high road when it comes to do, dealing with things. Mm. Um, I understand that to a point. You know how in that Family Guy episode where Spider-Man jumps in and said, everybody gets one? Mm. There we go. Okay. You know what I'm saying? That's a good analogy. That's a good analogy. It's a good analogy. It's making sense. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. Um. <laughs> Would you say that's, that's one of your, like, what's the word? That's like what an things? icon for you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so this and, like, drinking, like, just that in general. I've, um, I've grown to make my own. How, how did you come up with that? How? Yeah. Demand them. Demand them where? You from South? Yeah. South London? Mm -hmm. Okay. Demand, oh. demand, demand them. Um, I'll be honest. I think my, hum my humour is very unique. And the reason why it's very unique is because the man name's humour is very unique. And... You always lived in South London? Have I? Yeah. No, 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 no. So I was born in Jamaica. Oh, is it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, at what age did you come over here? I think I was maybe like six, seven. Okay, right, there. right. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. in, in South London, um, do you eat pussy? Do I what? Y'all niggas eat pussy. Huh? <laughs> Mm -hmm. So it's a saying um, that Jamaican niggas don't eat pussy. You're born and bred in Jamaica. Do y'all eat pussy? Yes or no? And London, London men too. Y'all don't eat pussy either. So as a British Jamaican, do y'all eat pussy? Hopefully if I stay still, they'll forget about the question and then we can move. Did you hear the question? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, 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 I do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I eat vagina. Wow. Vagina. Vagina, yes. Uh, not all, not all uh, Jamaicans are forthcoming with uh, that absolute fact. But from my understanding, from uh, social media conversations and stirrings, I feel like the genuine consensus is a lot of them do it, but bonfire upon that. <laughs> and what, what does that mean? If you don't understand what that means, it weren't meant for you. <laughs> it weren't meant for you. <laughs> okay. All right, well, all right, what was it like growing up in South? What was your upbringing like? You came Dangerous. Over, you came over at six, run us through it. Just, just a little brief. It was, it was dangerous. Whereabouts in South? So when I first came over, I was in Kennington. Right. Um, from Kennington, I moved to Turnham. Mm. From Turnham, I then moved to 
Turn him is next to Broccoli, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Mm. I then moved back to Kennington. Yeah. From Kennington, I moved to Broccoli. All right. Uh, and then from Broccoli, I moved to Hither Green. And then obviously now I am where I am, which I ain't going to really disclose, mm. you know what I'm saying? But from South. So you said it was rough? Yeah. How come? Um, for a number of reasons in general. Um, obviously, when you first come over to the country, uh, accent isn't the best. Understanding of what people are saying isn't the best. Um, and just getting into the culture is completely different. Like you go from doing things like playing, like we used to get, like you see, you see how you had, had the rolls of tissue? Like you get one of the rolls of tissue you might put on the floor and put a tennis ball on top and then you got rounders, you see what I'm saying? Or we might get like a bag of marbles and all that kind of stuff and we're flicking or whatever. Or when we jump on the TV, there's only like a few channels and you know, you can only see cartoons at a certain time and they're American cartoons and all that kind of stuff. Um, so when you come over to the UK and everything is just completely different. I remember trying pizza for the first time. What age? I think I, 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 was, I was six. I, I'm, sure, I'm sure I was six when I came over. I was six. Mm. And I was like, oh, what did blood clot? My mum my mom ordered it. It came into the house. It came in a box. And the way that the house was, it's like the, the kitchen was here. The living room was here. It's like a small corridor. Front door's there. You go to the side. That's the bedroom. And then right there, there's the, um, there's the bathroom, yeah? I used to sleep in the living room with like a little fold-out bed. But like there was a big beautiful window here. Yeah? Like you open up the window and because the where, where like the, the house was positioned, the sun really shine through. But I remember my mom bought the pizza. She put the pizza down and I was like, what the hell is this? She opened up the box and I was like, Jesus Christ, what's going on here? And I didn't, you see the, like something as simplistic as, you see the little um, thing that separates the top from the cheese? Yeah, yeah. I was <clears> so, throat> throat> I was just like, yo, what is this? <laughs> and like be, being able to like go into, like a shop and just seeing like yo there's there's a mad like it's, it's almost it's, it's just like a sugar rush or a kid in a candy store i was seeing all the selection of sweets yeah, yeah like like i was just completely hit with so many different things okay. at the same time that it was a bit of a shock um i didn't really know how to navigate it at first mm. again the accent you're being introduced to so many different things um you've come over from a completely different environment um, every, everything, everything's just com just completely different. But it was it was amazing. It was amazing. You said it was uh, quite rough though, wasn't it? Yeah. As in, like, was that in school or just just around the ends, like around your area? Oh, uh, uh, both, man. So anything you remember seeing, like <laughs> fights or something, or altercations? Obviously, I went to I went to Crofton. Um, I saw a lot of things in Crofton. Before Crofton became Prendergast, I saw a lot of things. Like, I'm talking year seven. You ain't been there two days yet. How are the year 11s beating up the, seven, the, the, the year sevens? And we're talking massive brawl. The first time I saw nunchucks off a TV screen was in year seven, maybe my second month in. Shortly after that, I saw a gun. The man them were smoking round the corner from some certain blocks and the teachers were just watching it like... Well, like it was just normal? Like it was just normal. You said two months later you saw what, a gun? Yeah. Where? In the school. Oh, someone's brought it in? Yeah. Damn. So what happened? <laughs> what, do you remember the day? So... <laughs> this is what, year eight? It was like, like, like just, just literally starting school. Um, they... Ah, God. It's very difficult for me to remember how the blocks were, but they were basically some like standalone blocks, like away from the main school, yeah? And like around the corner from these blocks is where the kids used to smoke, whatever it is that they're doing, X, Y, Z, blah, blah, blah. Around that block is where people would show people weapons. So for example, that's the same place that I saw the dump trucks. Oh, okay. But I saw like a pistol in that area as well. Um, in year nine, someone brought in a gun in their bag and showed it to us while we, was in, while we was in PE. So... Was that his gun? Yeah, no, no, no. So he, it was, it was, it would have been his, like, I guess it was like his brother's gun or something like that or something like that. I'm not too sure whatever it is, but... Yeah. Like, this is, this is what we're, this is what we're around. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, again, obviously when you're in Jamaica, you see that stuff in general. 
Um, but when you come into the UK and you don't see that stuff for a certain amount of time and then you get to a certain location and now all of a sudden you're seeing that stuff again, it's a little bit mad. Like Crofton was mad. I don't think you'll understand. Crofton was mad. Our school was evacuated because someone was living in our ceiling. What? Yeah. Think about it. Think about it. Someone <laughs> mm. was living in our ceiling. How did, you, how did they find him? Is it... Is it... Google it right now. <laughs> oh, was there an article about it? Google it right Our whole school was evacuated. And we had to go to another school via coach. Because someone was living in our ceiling. And they had to find out who it was. So they got him out, right? <laughs> so, I don't know if they captured him. Yeah. All I know is maybe like, what, a week? I think it was maybe two weeks later, he was back in school. But again, our school was evacuated because someone was living in our ceiling. How unhinged can you get? That's crazy. It's mad, isn't it? Yeah, yeah your school seems crazy. Would you say every school's like that as well, growing up, you reckon? Uh, back in that time, a lot of schools were like that. A lot of schools were like that. So it wasn't like you just went to a bad school, it was just... No, no, it was a bad school. Oh, okay, but it's more it's the <laughs> area as well. But it was, the area was just bad and there was just a lot of bad schools around the area. Like there was a lot of, like there was a lot of, like I remember there was one time when, I think it was maybe year nine, year 10, a bunch of people just came to the school and robbed like 20 people in an afternoon. Just Serious? Robbed everybody. What, from another school or? No, they didn't even go to school. Oh, so they're older? Mm. And they just robbed everyone outside of school? Just robbed everybody. Damn. It's crazy, right? <laughs> Did you ever had school against school wars? Anything like that? Uh, yeah, but it was different years. Mm. So it might be like this year's beef in this gang somewhere else. So it's not necessarily like year 10 and year 11, let's be finished, just the year 9s or the year 8s, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Mm. If we go back to your content for a sec, mm. um, I mean, does your content relate to your upbringing at all? Or what did you want to be when you were younger then? So I wanted to be an architect. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I wanted to be an architect. Um, but then again, I slowly grew out of that and I knew that I wanted to perform. Mm. And then from then, I also grew out of that and then I wanted to create. And now, in the place that I'm at right now, um, I want to produce. So I want to take ideas um, that I've got and basically bring a bunch of beautiful, inspirational people together and make it happen. So have you ever had any creator beef? <laughs> creator beef? <laughs> in your online wars? Um, no, you know. No, I don't think so. Um, I've never had... I've, I, have I? No. Do you know what it is? My content... Maybe not recently. But my content out of a vast majority has normally been very kind of like, like you can't beef it. Like it's very difficult for you to beef. Um, other than maybe a few comments where I might get like, people might say, oh, this, this person is, who is black is capitalizing off our culture. And I'm like, no, I'm just reacting to your food and I'm hungry. What, what culture would that be? Uh, so I'll give you a prime example. Obviously my demographics venture all over the place, yeah? So, for example, my biggest demographic on TikTok is, is, uh, is uh, uh, Mexico. So, like, United States, Spanish people. Um, the, big, the biggest demographic is the United States, but the main kind of people that frequent the video are from, um, are from Mexican heritage, heritage sorry, or they even speak Spanish. So, for example, I went viral for, like, learning the words to ingredients right. in Spanish. Do you see what I'm saying? Um, on Instagram, it's, it's UK and the USA. It's completely different. On Facebook, it's a completely different demographic as well. It just really depends. But it's, 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 all, it's a bit all over the place. I'm not even going to lie to you, man. It's a bit all over the place. Okay. A different question. Are you a, are you a family man? Oh, 100%. What does that mean? Are you, are you married? You got kids? Uh, so I'm engaged. Okay. Uh, I've got two kids. Um, and I'll be honest, I've, obviously, it was mentioned in the room when we first came in, I've always been a sweet boy. 
Um, and I've, I've always said from like the very jump that the family unit needs to stay together. Um, the family unit needs to be strong. The family unit needs to progress and stick together. Do you see what I'm saying? So I make sure that I try to be the best possible father, the best possible partner. Um, and obviously while I'm traversing this whole social media world, um, I in turn try and build a future that will allow my kids to actually have um, a vast amount of things and choices that they can actually make rather than um, what, is a, what is slightly being given available to you. I want you, I want my kids to be able to be like, I don't want to go uni, I want to start a company doing this. Now like my daughter came to me one day, uh, she didn't come to me, sorry, I walked into the living room and she was on the phone to her cousin and they were talking about what they wanted to do when they grew up. <clears throat> and normally, obviously, kids will normally say, oh, they want to be, you know, YouTubers and all this kind of stuff, blah, blah, blah. My daughter said she wanted to be a businesswoman. And I was like, yo, that's lit. My son wants to be Spider-Man, and that's also lit. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Um, but I want to be able to, I want to be Bruce Wayne. I want to be able to do it. Do you get me? If I want to be... If I want to be, if I want my son to be a superhero, I want to be able to get you the gadget so you can go and do it, man. Go and sling around the city or something like that. Go and, go and live your dreams, man. Do mm. no, I think that's good. That's good. Mm. Did you have your kids quite young or recently? Yeah, so I had, so I got a nine-year-old. Oh, yeah. Which is crazy. Mm. I've got a nine-year-old. That's crazy. Like, that is wild. And do you know what's mad? I was one of those kids back in um, secondary school where you would see someone that is like maybe mid thirties or like early thirties or maybe just twenty five plus, and you'd be like, "You're old." And now that I'm in that place, I'm like, "Yo, I've never felt better." But I've got a nine year old. That's wild to me. But yeah, I did. I did. I did have kids. Well, it depends on what you mean by young. I had my daughter when I was twenty one. Okay, right. I don't think that was young. <clears throat> you feel like you're ready for kids? Yeah, 100%. Yeah? yeah. Okay, right, yeah, right. Yeah. That's good. And, you know, you said your upbringing was kind of rough in South London. Do you, do you f have fear for them living in South London? You're right. Oh, 100%. I'm trying to move yeah. them out, man. Fuck, fuck all of this. Because I know a lot, of, a lot of kids get stabbed growing up and, you know, things happen, you know. Mm -hmm. Even for myself, I've, I've never thought, you know, I want to raise my kids out of London just because of things like that. Mm. Do you know what? I've come, obviously, I, I'm not going to explain it on camera because I, I think it would be a bit too traumatic for some, certain people in my life, but there's been a lot of things that have happened um, in my life um, that really hit straight to home. I'll be honest with you, I have had um, a lot of chances. In what way? God has given me a lot of chances. Okay. I ain't going to lie to you. God's really given me a lot of chances. Again, obviously, I'm not religious. I obviously believe in a higher power, but whoever that higher power is, give me a lot of chance. I'm not gonna lie to you. Um, they've allowed me to be here up to this day for my kids because I've made a lot of stupid mistakes in my life. Um, and part of being a man and part of being a father is understanding where you made those mistakes and understanding what you did, what kind of mentality you was in, and how you need to make sure you're never in that mentality again so that you can be there for your kids. As a father, the most disappointing thing I could do in my life for my kids is possibly making a done decision, not being here anymore, and not having set up something that allows them to live 20, 30, 40, 50 times the life that I live. I would be incredibly disappointed in myself. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I get you. What do you mean you had, do you not want to talk about it? That you had like second chances? Boy. Is that, for, is that like a close <laughs> miss? I've had a lot. Uh, obviously, as I said, because, because, because a lot of, <laughs> because, <laughs> because of these social media and because I have a lot of eyes on me in terms of my family and stuff like oh, that, right. certain, certain people in my family are very conservative. Um, and to this day, they, won't, they would never know a lot of the things that have happened to me because I just, I just want to go into it because it just doesn't really make any sense to me. It causes more harm than good. All I will say is, I've had a lot of close calls, yeah. a lot of close calls. Um, 
and I feel like my way of um, progressing from those close calls and giving people advice is that maybe sometimes just take a minute to think about what you're doing. Take a minute to think. Is it plausible? Don't get into, and obviously a lot of people wouldn't have seen this, but don't get into a nigger moment. Wait, can you explain that? So, if you had the pleasure of growing up in the era of boondocks, you would understand what a nigger moment is, yeah? Okay. It's when two upstanding black humans, I use that term very loosely, yeah? Two upstanding black humans come together and due to some petty situation, they allow themselves to draw themselves out of character and create moments that cause way more harm than they were supposed to. And in that same example, in another clip, you'll see the quote unquote nigger moment attempting to happen with a white dude and the white dude just walks by and says, hey, I'm white, and just walks away. And I'm just like, I get it. We put ourselves in some very stupid situations. And again, learning from the nigger moment is the reason why I'm still here. Okay. Through the grace of God. So that's what, the state of mind? Yeah. So there could have been a lot more situations that I could have reacted to negatively in the quote-unquote nigger moment way. And it would have been 10 times worse than it needed to be, mm. rather than just letting things go. I feel like us as, as, as black people, we have a very strong ego. Um, and disrespect is like the worst thing in the world to us. Mm. And sometimes you just need to let it go. I get it, you're hurt, but... Don't, you don't need to, to keep going, do you get it? Okay. Um, what's your most embarrassing thing that's happened to you in life? <laughs> Let me detail it now. I'm embarrassed myself. Um, it was in college. Okay. What college? I went to Christ King College. Oh, right, Lewisham? Yeah. yeah. It's Christ King College, though. <laughs> um, I think it was my second year. Um, and I wanted to... Like some, someone had asked me to go and do like a little dance set with them basically. But it wasn't really choreographed or anything like that. And I wasn't the best dancer back in the world, back in the day when I was in college. So I was like, still not the best dancer, but again, as I said earlier, my personality kind of got me places. So it is what it is. Doesn't matter how good you are. Your personality gets you everywhere. Just, just be a nice person. Doesn't really matter. Um, so me and this girl was like, oh yeah, we're going to do this dance, blah, 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 blah. We're going to sub it to you and then we're going to sub it to me. We're going to sub it to you and we're going to sub it to me. The day comes up for the, for the thing now. We come on stage, I'm frozen. You've got about 600 kids in front of me. And you have to understand, this is a bunch of 16, 17, and 18 year olds. I've absolutely bombed on stage. The girl, that, the girl that's next to me is eating me up. Man. Her performance is amazing. Fam. Like, she's doing her thing, eating man up. My performance is shit. There was no claps. What, it was just there was bad? No cheers. It was just terrible. Absolutely. Nerves got to me. I weren't the greatest dancer. Absolutely terrible. About 600 kids just watching me. You see, when I walked out that assembly, yeah. do you think anyone even gave me an eye contact? Like, they even cared? They were just like, nah, bro, we didn't even... Like, what is that? Man? <laughs> we didn't, we didn't, we didn't, like, it's so shit, we ain't going to comment on it. We're just going to move forward. We're just going to forget that shit happened. That's probably one of the most embarrassing moments. But do you know what that taught me? that I really don't care about what people think about my performance. I'm... Anything in front of somebody eventually will be good. So, I'll give you a prime example. There's a YouTube channel where a person puts stuff on a chair and sits on it. Thousands of views. Thousands? Thousands of views. He just puts stuff on the chair? Just puts stuff on a chair and he sits on it. Sits on the stuff. Yep. Wow. Thousands of views. <laughs> and do you know what the, do you, do you know, do you know, do you know what the, the, the whole moral of that story is? You're not necessarily shit. I mean, you might be shit, which in my case I was, 
You might not necessarily be shit. It's just that your content hasn't reached its audience yet. Okay. Is that because you're doing it wrong? No. It's just it hasn't reached its audience yet. So I'll give you a prime example. Let's say, for example, there's 100 people that can potentially see your content. You put it out and only one person watches it to the end of the end. But the person that needs to like your content is at the 100th mark. Your content just hasn't reached that person yet. Do you get it? You just haven't reached it yet. Doesn't mean your content is shit. It might be shit. But even if it's shit, it just hasn't reached the right person yet. Because you can go viral fucking anything. Uh, what's, your, what's your advice for someone who wants a million followers? Um, how, do, how does someone get there? Find a repli replicatable way to do your content. What does that mean? So, with social media, you need to do a few things. You either need to set a schedule and stick to it um, and hope that your content is good enough for people to tune in every time you stick to it, or spam the shit out of everything that you're doing and just hope something sticks, and whatever sticks, you run with it. My advice to everyone that wants a million followers would be to go guns blazing. All of these weird things that these social media people tell you about posting times and hashtags this and all this kind of shit is absolute bullshit. It's called confirmation bias. A lot of it is confirmation bias. You don't know. Everyone is spitballing. You don't know. You're guessing whether or not the algorithm does this. Do you know what I've done throughout my entire content creation history? I just test things. And if it works, I'll run it. Okay, right, right. I'll give you a prime example. You see on TikTok, yeah? And a lot of people that use TikTok don't know this. And again, the only way you would know this is if you actually paid attention to the, to the, to the algorithm. There's a day on TikTok <coughs> or a specific time period that is golden for you. And I'll give you a prime example. If you post something and you can see it going viral, most people would just stop posting and let that thing go viral because they think that whatever it is that they're doing is going to affect the virality of that video. No, that video is already in the algorithm. Forget about it, allow it to grow. I understand you've got more ideas on your social media profile. Do more. There was a day when I, I think I posted a video, it went viral. And I was like, oh shit, I think it hit like maybe like 100K views in like an hour or something like that. So, like, oh shit, this is crazy. Posted another video. The next video started going viral. I posted another video, the next video went viral. Posted another video, the next video went viral. I think I posted maybe eight to nine videos in that day and almost every single one of them went viral and it was the highest growth I've ever had on social media in one day, I think it was like 84,000 followers. Absolutely ridiculous. And again, it's because I, I saw the opportunity, I saw where my day and time slot was. I didn't just post one viral video. I was like, fuck it, man, I'm gonna roll the slots. I just kept rolling and every video went viral. And I just grew and grew and grew. Okay. I mean, when it comes to making content um, and having a lot of followers, it doesn't always mean like you're making money, right? Yeah, it doesn't. So, I mean, saying that, what advice would you give to someone uh, to make the most money out of their content? Make something that is unique to you. So, right now I'm in the middle of trying to create a business that is, how can I say, incredibly, um, it's, 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 it's for all seasons, basically. So it doesn't just fit like Halloween, Christmas or something like that, it fits all seasons. There's something for everything. That's the business idea. Um, I've, I've been doing a lot more research now in terms of, in terms of monetization um, to kind of understand that the main, the main way that a lot of these social media content creators are making a lot more money is through building their own business. So whether it's like, I don't know, you've, source something and you slapped an own label on it and then you just promoted it through your social media through some Shopify store. So that's a private label brand? Yeah, it just, yeah, it just, okay. it just makes money. People will buy anything if it's endorsed by a social media content creator. And not only that, um, if people are trying to make money, I would say um, find a way to um, make whatever you're doing unique. So for example, some of the biggest content creators that I've ever done it have a specific thing and everyone can normally identify what that thing is. So prime example, Kebby Lame is, if you see someone do, you know it's Kebby Lame. Yeah. That's his thing. 
you know what I'm saying? There's a guy named Angry Reactions. His thing is being angry. So it's having like a, that's your branding, isn't it? Yeah, so you have a yeah. thing. You have a unique. Yeah, you have yeah. a thing and then you create something. You don't necessarily need to put your face on it, but you just promote it through the back end. So like what you're doing with the drink and <laughs> would you say that's, that's your thing, right? What? Like when you drink and you, you push out your lips. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So I sell, yeah, yeah, I, sell, yeah. I, sell, I, sell, I sell merch and all that kind of stuff. I've, I've got like teacups. Um, and that's part of mats. your branding. Yeah, 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 like aprons. Like I had a, I had a, um, I had a catchphrase called not the pimienta, which means not the black pepper. And it just went absolutely crazy. So I put it on some t-shirts and sold some. And it's doing well? It's doing well. That's good, yeah. yeah. Again, it's, it's a slogan that I made up through reacting to some food videos. If it does any good in general, it's good. Because all I did was make facial expressions to some food. Okay. Last question that we mm. ask everyone is just what inspires you in life? Just what inspires you in general? A lot of things. So my kids inspire me. My daughter's about to be a little content creator. Like I'm teaching her how to edit. Um, she likes to shoot videos with her cousins and all that kind of stuff. And how old is she? She's nine. Okay. So like she's learning how to do her business. Do you see what I'm saying? She's learning how to edit. She's learning how to do all these types of different things. That's, would that be on TikTok or? No, no. She, so I, I don't allow her to post yet. Okay, I wanted right. to get her skills up, um, do whatever it is she needs to do. When she's old enough to be able to kind of like understand that she doesn't need to pay too much attention to the comments, then I might be like, okay, we can expose you to some kind of social media or something like that. But in general, um, I would just like her to work on, just, just keep being a bubbly personality that she is. And when she gets to an age where I think, hey, you know, we can get you online and allow you to explore your personality and do whatever it is you want to do, with obviously guidance, then we can move forward from there. Hmm. Okay. Um, so you know in the Matrix, yeah? How you have the red pill or the blue pill, right? Mm -hmm. If you're given the red pill or the blue pill, like the Matrix, which, would you, which one would you take? So Can I split them in half and take half wait, of wait, each? you haven't heard the options. Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> right, so the red pill is a, is a happy family life for the rest of your life, right? And the blue pill is riches beyond your means, but you're a single man. Oh, happy family life, 100%. Um, okay, so happy family life over like 100 billion. 100%. And you're a single man? 100%. How come? Because um, I love my family. Mm -hmm. And I love my family. I think, okay. I think, I think, that, I think that is what it is. I, I don't, <clears throat> if, if I was to, to, God forbid, not be able to be in touch with my family and just all of a sudden be rich and not have the same thing that I have now, that would be boring, man. Mm. Shit's boring. I like my son waking up and jumping on my head. What you get? Little, yeah. you know, punch in the gut every now and again. <laughs> he wants to play Spider-Man, so he'll come and sit on my lap and jump in the controller and do that. I'd much rather that than, you know, being alone and all that kind of shit. Oh, it, sorry, I didn't even finish the question. In terms of what motivates me, yeah, so my kids, my kids definitely motivate me. Um, my partner motivates me, my family motivates me. But you know what else really motivates me? Anyone in my life that has ever told me that I can't do something, how do you feel? I find it absolutely hilarious that you doubted me. But I would also like to thank you. Because it makes sense. You pushed me to where you didn't want me to be. And that's amazing. Right. And what are your socials? AJ's reactions and everything. And last question, because for older. Um, is the earth flat or round? Depends on your perspective. No, I'm joking, it's round. <laughs>